All right, awesome guys. Hey, welcome back to DDC. We're at the table. What's up? Um, How's it going? You know, doing the do. Um, as you guys can see, we have these lovely beers sitting on the table. Uh, this is the Blueberry Braggot from Exit 3. Um, out, of the, out of the New Jersey term. Like, oh, I set the bottle off the table. Go grab it. All right, well, I'll be right back, guys. Apologies. Oh, boy. <laughs> Immediately off the bat. But, yeah. I mean, I haven't so, tried it yet, but it looks nice. We got a nice glass for it. Yeah, it has a nice amber color. It looks very pretty. <laughs> While I'm up, go ahead and give you guys a nice smells of you of it. like a nice sour beer. It smells That's like a sour. Interesting. Is it a sour? Um, it's actually a honey ale. Hmm. It smells like a sour beer. Then go ahead and have my first taste. Cheers. Also same. Cheers. Ooh, Just, let, me, let me get set down. Cheers. Cheese them. Cheers. Get it all. Everybody go. Drink the beers. Whoa! That did not taste like I was expecting. Mmm. Smoky. Mmm. It's thick. Yeah. Um, so yeah. It kind of reminded me of medicine. Yeah. Going down a little it's bit. It's thick. Mmm. It kind of reminds me of like a... Tastes good. Yeah. Like it tastes a, all right. Like, like beer. Like baklava. Tastes, tastes all right. It's got like a lot of like... Like the honey is like definitely thick in there. You can definitely it's tell like it. mead. But there's a lot of like that's layers. Well, that's what a bragget is. A bragget is the style yeah. of mead. Oh. Um, but look at that. Brewed with blueberries. I yes. I don't really um, taste any blueberries. I don't either. You, you get, I think it's like, it's more like a really slight at the end because the honey definitely like takes over a lot say, of I can kind of get like a hint of it in the smell and the aroma, but not so much in the taste. Mm. Smooth. Yeah. Um, and from from what the I really enjoy it too much. From what the information I've read, it. though, I've uh, I've heard that as it gets warmer, it gets a little bit better in flavor. Really? So we'll see as it heats up. Yeah, it just it, it allows for more of the aromatics to come out. Um, <laughs> candlelight get you warm. Roast a beer by the I'm campfire. Gonna toast up my beer. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what, like you were saying, Kate, what, what would you give it? One out of ten. Um, I don't know, but it does say this This is a beer to share, perhaps with some nice aged cheddar. So we should have got some cheddar for Oh, that actually stuff. might have been good. The sharp cheddar, to the bite might have totally been pretty good mm -hmm. with that. It's just a, uh, it's a dessert style beer. I mean, do you remember that apple cheddar? The, no, I'm sorry, that apple smoked Oh, cheddar? yes, I do. That was like, it was like, Ooh, it was cheddar cheese, delicious. but they like smoked it with like apples, whole mm -hmm. apples, and then apple wood. And apple, you know, just like. The whole, basically, whole apple trees essentially. Oh, wow. Smoke the cheese. And it tasted. It was like cheddar wow. cheese, but it tasted like a red apple. It was, mm. That's well, it was cool. awesome. That's it was what it was. Such good cheese. It was smoky too. Like it had that real smoky flavor. <clears throat> I'd probably give this. Mm, I'd probably give that like a seven, seven out of ten. I'm probably around the same, like seven and a half. Um, right in that range. The only reason I give it a little bit higher, um, I like the fact that it's fifteen percent. Holy shit! Um, I did not know so that. Like, that changes things. Yeah, like this is like drinking like some like no, heavy wine. No, that changes things a lot. I didn't realize it was that alcoholic. <laughs> so can you that, that, that much it, alcohol that in here and you yeah. can't taste it because the, no, the honey like that's completely like, that's washes crazy. it over. It, not, it didn't yeah. taste at all. I, I mean, it definitely that. tastes like alcohol. Like it has an alcohol flavor. Mm -hmm. But I thought it was like ten percent or like like eight or nine. Like yeah, it just tastes like beer. But it doesn't taste like a fifteen percent. Because we've had. Do you remember we got a nice. 19% beer once. Oh, it was awful. It tasted it like somebody awful. melted black licorice and then took cough syrup and poured all the melted black was licorice. It, was it like El Diablo or something like that? Yeah. It was horrible. I hate black licorice. Well, we, couldn't, we couldn't even drink it. Like, we, that's how bad like, it was. We were going like, to try and sip it and we couldn't even do that. And I was like, you know what? Ooh. Just fuck it. I'm going to chug it. I tried. Immediately threw up. I tried. I got, like, immediately got out of the balcony dude. and threw up. Immediately went outside and just... Where? Uh, I, um, it was at the old house. Yeah. Uh, oh, the old right. house. <laughs> the uh, Fontana. My sliding glass. Actually, I think I did it outside because I was afraid I would vomit. Yeah. You did. Like, I went outside and then two chugs. I went... Bleh, bleh. <laughs> and then I went inside and poured it all down the drain. Oh, God. Because it was the worst beer I've ever It was had. literally wow. like drinking like Delsum. Like thick, worse, oh, cough yeah. syrupy. Delsum was bad like my first flavor. robo trip. Mm, Let's get in the spaceship. Yeah, it, was, it was something. <laughs> but yeah, that sounds awful. They're pretty crazy. 
Yeah, no, it was really brutal. Yeah. Yeah, I hated I thought, that beer. Would never, would never recommend it to anyone. What was it called? Uh, who knows? Yeah, no, I don't, I don't remember. That's like a good enough for me to remember. That's for sure. <laughs> you think uh, it'd be so bad? We would, I would remember, but uh, well, it, it it was so bad that we remember how bad it was, but it was so like, bad that we didn't actually take the time to remember wait, what so it did was. Did you just get two? Like, yeah, you, they came as single beers because it was nineteen oh, percent. I don't sense. even remember where or how we got it. We didn't we got them at the liquor store. Do we buy them? Mm-hmm. No, we couldn't even buy them. Somebody's buying us alcohol, weren't they? Oh, no. I turned yeah, 21 yeah. right as we moved in. Yeah, here. and so did we. Yeah, yeah so did. that's true. So how somebody was buying us alcohol. I don't know how we got those. I think somebody fucked up and like, or somebody gave us something. I don't remember. But we ended up with these things somehow. Yeah. And they were gross. They were awful. Uh, yeah, they were terrible. It's kind of weird how like young but old we are. I don't know. I feel like 21, you kind of like always think about, I don't know. You think of most twenty-one-year-olds being like, uh, like wild teens, which I think a lot of them are. I think there's just a reason you say that. Like, as much as I'm an old soul, like we're also old souls. I feel like I feel we're. Like we are. I don't know. I don't not, know. I not feel even like there's a difference between all, but, old soul and homebody. I feel like I'm more of a homebody than an old soul. But I think that makes you more of an old soul because that's what a lot of older people kind of. They, no, there's they, a lot of older people that like to party too, though. Is the thing. Oh. That's yeah, true. There's like, totally a lot. Like, it's just yeah, a, totally it's a mix. Just, like, there's, the thing is, eventually old people stereotypes. get so old that they can't go party. That's also true. true. <laughs> I wouldn't really call those people homebodies because you're unable to go. Yeah. You're, you're at home and you're just like, this is terrible. Exactly. I'm so bored. <laughs> and they want to go do something. So. Yeah, where your hangovers last two days, not... Two days. I feel like when you're like 70, do those things are like week long excursions. And you why, buy, why? And your body just starts, the yeah, liquor stuff can't starts to it. really fuck yeah. with your liver, and then it makes it to where it's just hard on your whole body to probably like deal with. Yeah. And that's why everybody says hangover really get worse, you get older. But if you're like 70 years old, that makes sense why I never really got hungover when I like was like. 17, 18. Oh, so. Really that often. <laughs> oh, I had I've had I had one the other day where I literally threw up in my car. Oh yeah, you don't like about driving. That. <laughs> I had a migraine so bad and I was literally driving down the highway on forty four and I was like, please just let me get to Riverside. And I pull over and open up my door and I was like, Oh no. And I was looked over, I had no bag. I grabbed my my disc golf rag. It's like a rag, like a four by four rag, not big at all. Threw it down on my seat and <laughs> Into the rag, drove on to work, kept on going. Um, and honestly, the rag, it was a microfiber. It absorbed like 90% of all the vomit. Oh. Cleaned out my car, doesn't smell bad at all now. I totally wish I we got like a vivid image of you throwing up on the podcast. Because I would totally edit that video in like right there. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that could have been one of the perfect memes of the century. Just, <laughs> Such a shame. Yeah, but like honestly, like even hearing it, yeah, watching that podcast, one for each of us, and then do that constantly for everybody all the time. What? Get people to throw Get up. Get each of us to have uh, somehow throw up, like due to something, mm-hmm. and then all then anytime there's a mention of. I'm sure we'll have another up. drinking challenge. No, we already did the forty hands, which we all failed. Yeah, that got I that got out of hand. Threw up, but after the show. I just got inebriated I feel on like the I've show. Thrown up. Yeah, after before I went to Well, bed. I didn't throw up after the forty hand show, I don't think. I threw up after that one hard. Did I? I did not throw up after the I think I might have actually. Uh, the shot challenge. I just went right to bed. I, I definitely threw up after that. I actually no. drove to Waterburger. No, you didn't. Do not, I do not condone that behavior. You went with him. I didn't fine. drive. I sat passenger. But you you told would me. condone. That you feels like that's fine. Let's just move past it. So it's fine. Uh, I stayed uh, home. I stayed yeah. home. So, so that was a fun night. night. <laughs> um, if you missed that podcast, go check it out. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. Um, it's it's it definitely doesn't look like what this one looked like, it. but uh, it's Seriously. it's good quality. It's funny as shit. That's for sure. I still get giggles watching the old ones. Yeah, they're they're pretty like <laughs> gross to look at, but. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, so back when we were rocking overhead light, that's it. Oh god, yeah. That yellow light it makes me cringe. Just gave like this like grainy, like like twelve bit imagery. Twelve bit. Twelve bit. Eight bit. Eight bit. Sixteen bit. But no twelve bit. Anyway. I thought my own shit, man. There was a local show, art show. Oh yeah! Show. Shouts out to Whaley for that shit. Graduation party slash all sorts of shit. It was fucking done. My God, Tulsa, Oklahoma. 
That shit was crazy, man. Uh, definitely enjoyed it. It was awesome to see like Tulsa artists out like together and like just doing shit. I I, I don't even know everyone who had an exhibit there, but like yeah, shouts so, out to everyone who so was. So basically, who was it was a graduation party for a friend of ours who just graduated OSU, and she threw this. I guess it, I don't know, call it a show or a party. It's just like a show an slash exhibit. graduation party, but. A bunch of local artists put up a bunch of artwork, and then we had, not we, but then she had, um, like, some local rap artists, musicians, like, perform as well. So it was pretty cool. It was a good time. Um, I thought it was really yeah, cool for, like you said, like, have all the artists in Tulsa just kind of link up in one spot. Yeah. Along with, like, everybody we know pretty much. So I don't know. It was just, like, it was just, like, good vibes. Yeah, most definitely. Pictures. Yeah, I mean, we definitely talked about like vlogging it, but uh, I tried, but I'm very new and did a very shitty job. Just being I'm honest, just like pictures <laughs> of because some of it was really, really, yeah. really cool. Yeah, like dancing. we should have, and we dancing, definitely loved like, to have been able to plug some of that shit into this video for you guys. So you guys could have seen what we mm -hmm. were seeing. See the drawings of ladies. Oh, dude, some so, of that shit was cool. The very back, well, very back. The ones in the very back were really cool. Mm -hmm. But did you see the one like above the the door frame? And the, it was yellow and red. Oh, I'm talking about the one that was gray and black. Dude, I don't think so. No, it was so dope. It like the shading was incredible. Like her muscles, like she she was like stretching or something. You could like see like it looked like her muscles were rippling. It was really freaking cool. Interesting. The yeah, super I detail. See that. And, like I don't know. I just thought it was. Beautiful. I didn't really look at a lot of the. Art. I mean, I I like briefly like walked around, but I didn't really like stop and look at everything i wish know? i would have done more too because like some of those people i would love to reach out circle. to and like talk to them about like their process like in tulsa and like their come up because mm -hmm. like i don't know man it was just like like we were talking about it's really cool to see so many different artists from tulsa come together in one spot and like mesh and have a good time it's not like a competition yeah, she said there was like over we're promoting us 200 people there yeah it, it, i mean it's, that's amazing yeah, I mean, it was a really good time. Yeah, I mean, and then like the the sets themselves, uh, Campbell and Gardner. That was, I really can't <laughs> even describe like how I felt about it. Like it was awesome. Like it, it was definitely awesome. But like I feel like that's like just supposed to be like more of an experience almost. No, most definitely <laughs> like the experience. I was remember I heard people say like they had like rehearsed that set. Oh, like, really? Like, for, like, hours before the show. Really? Like, had, like, every movement, like, memorized before, like, anything went on. So, like, like you said, like, it was an experience. Yeah. Like, you definitely had to be there and see it to enjoy it. Like, a kind of like, like a Grateful Dead type thing. Like, they played so many shows to the same thing. <laughs> but, like, every show was a little Grateful bit different. Dead. Huh? I said I would not compare them to Grateful Dead. No, not, not, <laughs> not in the sense of, like, historical, like, uh... Musically, I mean, yeah, <laughs> really at all. Yeah, exactly. Campbell yeah. Gardner is definitely not a Grateful Dead style music. Just, it was you had to see, be there to really get the full effect. Kind of fits the bill perfectly. <laughs> Most definitely. I mean, they were fantastic, and then uh, Larry comes on. Cooley B was fantastic afterwards. Was there something before him? Um, so Campbell Gardner, by the way, just because yeah, nobody Gardner we didn't expand cool. upon it at all. Like they're just like a satire hip hop. Yeah. Group. I don't uh, even it's, know. It's, it was just very ridiculous, and it was really definitely something to watch. It was pretty, <laughs> pretty entertaining. A couple guys from Lukewarm together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it's their side project. It's goofy. It was goofy as hell, but yeah. it was definitely entertaining. The battery. But, yeah, and then, I don't know. Was there someone else? There wasn't anyone else before Larry? I don't think there was anyone no. else before Larry. Oh, yeah, there was a band, dude. A band. Yeah, there, there was someone else before. The that's first right. band when we got there, I don't know what their name was. Yeah. They played before Camelot Gardner, yeah, though. Yeah, right. was definitely a band. That's uh, right. And they were more like a uh, like a punk alternative yeah, band. traditional. Yeah. They were like, actually you know, pretty decent. I, I, I wouldn't really pay much attention to them, honestly. The vocals were... Cool, I guess. But yeah, then then Camel Gardner came on. They were I kind of liked them honestly, but I kind of like set. a lot of like just weird, stupid shit honestly. It, it almost <laughs> seemed like it almost seemed like a playoff like on a uh, XXX Tentacion, like that real loud, like lo fi so, just yeah. like energy, like yeah. get everyone going. Not you're really not trying to understand what they're talking about. Yeah. I mean, they had a song called Mother's Pills about breaking oh, into yeah. the mom's pills cabinet, taking their pills. Yeah, they just. I, I talk about some silly shit, I guess. They definitely talk about some <laughs> silly shit. But yeah, then Larry, cool. I mean, excuse me, 
Cooley Blow came on, went on, and... Rips up. Well, yeah, I guess one of the main, like, negative parts of the whole thing that I noticed, especially during his set, was, like, the speakers were awful. Yeah, they didn't... They weren't, they weren't loud enough. Yeah. It was, it was weird. And I'm not hating, because, like, obviously loved whoever put it... Like, you know, putting yeah. it on, like, getting everyone there. But, like, the DJ sets, like, the music they were playing seemed pretty damn loud yeah, no, i was bumping but then as soon as i got a live performer on it's like you couldn't it wasn't hear the music as, and you couldn't hear them really especially, I mean, yeah especially the mics weren't turned up loud set. enough or something yeah uh but i mean i was lucky enough to be like right up front like cooley did a great fucking yeah. job i could hear him i could hear him great but i'm like obviously me to the camera length away yeah if not closer at times um Slade loved yeah. it. I'm um, looking really forward to having him on the podcast here in the future. Yeah. Uh, you guys get some insight from him. Definitely in the works. And then after that, it was St. Dom came on and he was electric, yeah. uh, he killed exhilarating. That sure. It was, it was definitely <laughs> like an experience. And I was so happy to be right there, like next to him d- during the whole thing. And then fucking. Daniel comes on. Yeah. Tall Bacchus has a live show. Our buddy Daniel. Oof. Sheesh. His first was up. I mean, uh, first like live yeah, performance like the first he's, thing ever done. he's ever done like that. Uh, it was. He did good. He did really well. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, you he did really like. Well. I heard him very clearly. Like he sang very well. Like yeah, he sounded really good. But absolutely. Well, and like if you guys are watching right now, Daniel Saint Dom. Drop that fucking song that you guys performed yeah. on the stage because we're waiting really on it. Shit. That thing was fucking crazy. We loved it. Uh, really wish they would played Erica. Yeah. Oh my um, yeah, I was really wanting to hear that because yeah, that I mean because especially since that's a song with Saint Dom and Cooley, Cooley and they were both there and Daniel and Johnny. Yeah, Johnny's on the hook, but Johnny wasn't there. But, but I feel like, like Daniel could have easily sung that. Most definitely. But I don't know. How, Made it I don't happen. Know how people feel about that well uh, and i had like a little bit of an insight (laughs) talked to dom after the show and he said it was really just more of like a didn't have enough time to get prepared for it to get all those three people together to get ready for the set to Mm -hmm. get all your lyrics together know when we're how we're going to vibe on it so i can totally understand that because you want to you want to give the audience a good show. You know, you want to get think them. If they would have done that like last, like that would, they would have teared <laughs> like it Like came back with an encore yeah. and like all of them like came up on the stage and finished off with yeah, it. Yeah, they would yeah. have teared that shit down. Most and, definitely. But I mean, like even being there like up close, like. Yeah. It same. was nuts. Like it, it was good enough. I came today. I listened to Orphic. And I oh, listened yeah, to yeah. Uh, Wavelength, uh, one of his other projects. Like uh, let's do Wonderlust. Wanderlust, yes. I'm sorry. I don't know where I'm getting wavelength from. Uh, listen to it today. You like are on a different one. Dude, yeah, most definitely. Uh, always on a different wavelength. Uh, dude's talented. Yeah. Uh, definitely has... Uh, yeah, he has that, that little kick. I don't know. I was playing him on the way to Louis with David yesterday. He's really dope. Um, yeah, but he, he, he did... Like, he performed really well. I mean, I don't know how many times he's performed like that, but he like he yeah, acts like he knows what he's doing. Yeah, he had good stage presence. Yeah, like, so, getting the speaker sucked, mm-hmm. like you said, and so it was like kind of difficult mm-hmm. to tell. But he like he was he was mm-hmm. killing it. He too. hopped in the crowd and got crazy with all of us. I mean, and that was sick. A Fubu jersey. I mean, that it doesn't really matter what you're saying at that point when you're oh, just yeah, interacting are, with are everyone. Too. Yeah, so that was sweet. And then there was a. One person after him, free ice cream. Yeah, he had that. Uh, he had the like twat wave beat. That was on. crying. Uh, that was cool. Yeah, he was. He's really cool. I've I've heard of um some of his stuff on SoundCloud. I actually reposted it recently after, like that party. Like, yeah. I went back and like listened to it, and yeah, he's pretty cool. Yeah, he's cool. He has like that, like the like vaporwave like style, mm-hmm. like just like yeah. Yeah, I mean, exactly. he definitely, I can definitely see some influence of Icy Twat on him. Yeah, it's like, kind of like singy songy almost. Yeah. I mean, but, but that, that's, that's cool. the future of hip-hop I'm really seeing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I think yeah. like guys like that Just who like have... Melodic shit. <laughs> Let me help you. Exactly. Let me help We've you. We've been on an every... It's all about... We've been motherfucker, on every, don't get me that. Let me it's, help it's you. It's all about the melodic rap. We've been on an everyday struggle kick if you haven't oh seen God. this. Oh, my God. Joe Budden. <laughs> Joe Budden is a pretentious cock. Like he has, some I like really him. I like him. He has some really interesting shit to say, 
but a lot is just buried in this mire of like. I'm the smartest mu- asshole yeah. you've ever met. I think, yeah. Like, that uh, just stems from like... No, no, no. <laughs> let, let me help you. Let me help you. Really, what you're... What you <laughs> Did you answer my question? Did you, you answer my say. question? And he's definitely like, like, I feel like on that's, him to be an asshole that's, for that's sure. The, well, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> it, it totally is like his show persona. And maybe that's yeah. not how he is in person. But on the show, mm, watching, I was getting like fired up watching <laughs> the show. Because he's just like... like he gets he's fired DJ up. DJ Academics. Yeah. He, yeah. He's just like shitting on him. Like, and not even, he's like, he's like, did he even contribute today? And <laughs> he didn't even let him say a word. Like every time he would talk. Well, even like, no, see, like, but, but what I'm saying their face, like, that. like the mediator I have was even on like, a couple times. well, she was even like, at the end, you talked like, you need to chill. I don't like this button, button up yeah, Joe. <laughs> usually, but not today. Yeah. It and he goes, I, I, I get that you're trying to tell me to shut the fuck up on the loan. She goes, no, but really shut the fuck up, <laughs> Joe. Like, Jesus. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, I feel like when you're, you know, you got two guys that are passionate about stuff like that. Rip headphones. I feel so like, sorry. <laughs> I feel like they can just go, you know, go off like that. I apologize. That. I just, like, I wanted to give you the full experience. And that's, like, literally what happens. So, like. <laughs> yeah. And the crazy thing is he literally starts out talking like this, like, like about this level, and he just hey, baby, once, once he gets, home, he's like, I, I agree completely. You know that totally makes sense. Lay it down, but referring to my down, earlier down, point, let me tell you about why. <laughs> yeah, he gets fired up. He gets yeah, sweaty. He I mean, I feel him. I get fired up too. But like, did you did you watch the one with Yachty with me? Uh, oh, yeah, no. A little bit. Wait, no, I can imagine Yachty. that I one went to. Uh, he, he's not a big fan of Yachty. That was Wale. Yeah, it was Wale. Yeah. That was funny. They just, because, I don't know, they got those guys on there because they both, like, not, was, they, like, pissed both of them off. Yeah, Wally, I, from what I was heard a little bit, he was, like, talking shit. On, on DJ Jedi, Academics. Because, yeah. I don't know, yeah, I guess he thought he was saying he was corny or something. And so, dude, that's, corny, well, and that's why he got on there. And then Joe Budden was calling out <laughs> Lil Yachty for everything i guess pretty much everything he does and so that's why little yachty went up ended up getting on there and so I'm, i don't know I'm it's gonna have to watch my little yachty. it's just it's, because of what he said today yeah i mean he, he definitely talks a lot about label shit but i feel like that's also because he's like been involved in like right. all kinds of shit like that i understand like where he comes from is entirely from that perspective of having you know that exact experience mm-hmm. with a label but like it just since we're talking about this now like in the one we referenced like throughout, they went through like four different topics and multiple different artists, oh, yeah. and every single one of them—I'm not <laughs> even exaggerating—every single one of them, as soon as it was his turn to talk, when he forced it, he. Well, referring to what I said earlier about L.A., I don't want to say forced it. L.A. Reed. I mean, he, he plays fifty-fifty in the show. So. <laughs> I mean, okay, like, like I would say more like seventy-thirty, but. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's his, like, it's yeah, his no, show, I'm, that's what I'm saying. But I get, like, that's what he's doing. I'm just saying, like, uh, yeah. it's, it's like, a, I mean, I would, he reminds I, me of, like, a Bill O'Reilly for, like, hip-hop art. But I would like, compare it to our like, show, Dave, because, like, in the sense of, of an, like, we definitely don't do 33, 33, 33. We're definitely not a third share of how much we talk per episode. So, like, some episodes, yeah, most definitely he's 70, 30, but I'm sure there's episodes where he's 40, 60. Yeah, I don't think so. I, I mean, it's Joe from, Budden. From watching <laughs> one episode, I feel like it's very clear that Joe well, completely and that, runs that's just, his show. Yeah, I mean, when you're the but, loud, outspoken one, and I that's feel like why you're, you're paid to do. Yeah, right? exactly. And also, he has his own podcast where he does the same shit. So I feel like he's just he gets in that zone. <laughs> I'm not at all talking. I can definitely feel him firing up. I'm talking. It's just the layer of pretension that he talks through. Yeah. Let me help you when he's like it's it's not like he was struggling for an opinion either. <laughs> it's like where I'm like literally telling you my opinion and then you interrupt me and say let let me help you here. And then you give me your opinion. Like what I was saying was retarded and what you have to say is like the end all be all I'm god. Here is my wisdom. I don't know. It's kind of, it's funny. It's definitely <laughs> it's not funny to me. It it's just entertaining. Me well, it was entertaining, I guess. I was entertained. I'm definitely I'm definitely with you, Kate. It, it was entertaining. I, mean, I, I just enjoy the I just enjoy the banter oh, they I had. It. I mean, I don't even take it personally. It's just like I'm like, "Joe, fucking cut it out." <laughs> Why though? Because like the, there's no discussion. It makes him uncomfortable. It doesn't make me uncomfortable. He sees so much similarity. <laughs> I don't think that's true at all. <laughs> Damn. But whatever you say. <laughs> Damn. Whatever you say. You guys about to fight? 
David Martin is Bill O'Reilly. I think you guys should have some debates. I'm, I, you can definitely compare me to Bill O'Reilly, Mr. Supporting Donald Trump in two different podcasts now. So, just one? No, two different podcasts. Just one? Two different podcasts. What 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 other podcasts besides Edward Forty Hands? So Edward Forty Hands and I believe the one at either before it, I'm pretty sure. Because there's the one where, I split, his, where I split, I somebody split. commented and said that you were completely right and there was no evidence of Russian collusion. And that was Edward Forty Hands. That was Edward Forty Hands. And I think the time before that. Um which to clear that up, that was at the time. Now there FBI, is evidence. Oh my god! The FBI came out and said they were investigating him because they had incredibly strong reason to. He believe fired him. the guy because they had direct <laughs> evidence. <laughs> this was after the podcast. Like weeks two, after. No, it was like two days later. No, no, no. It was weeks it after. Was literally during. <laughs> like that was happening while we did that podcast. No, you can look at the dates of the podcast compared to when the news came out. But the reason we were talking after. about it on that. But anyway, podcast. what was the other exactly. podcast? What was the other podcast? <laughs> the one right before it. Like I don't want to sit here and argue with you about Donald Trump. You just proved that it was not worth arguing. About. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not worth arguing about. But I did not argue for well, Donald did, Trump. I in the did see today that. that he now has more people want are in favor of impeaching him than aren't. Yeah, so, no, it's it's, it's so definitely a serious thing that's going to be happening um, here pretty soon. The problem is with the impeachment I mean, well, process no, is we're just going to be moving down the chain. I mean, the thing is, an impeachment is like not even good at this point. No, Mike Pence is worse. Yeah, in like much every worse conceivable way because he's like not an idiot. He's just like a terrible, nasty, <laughs> disgusting human being. Yeah, like this lizard man. He can't even body. go. Eat he is lunch with other women by himself. And then Isn't that what he said. And then if you don't have Mike Pence, really who do we have? Who do we have? Who do on Mike Pence? We have Paul Ryan. I don't know. Paul Ryan might be worse than Mike Pence. I just know it's a bad, a bad, bad day. Like, it's a sad situation. Bernie should have won. It's pretty that's pretty unfortunate. A, that, that's, I mean, it's pretty much the way it goes. Should have is a really should have, would have, could have, but didn't. But I, I mean, like he was screwed out of the nomination. He should have had the chance to win. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I think if it was a Bernie Sanders Donald Trump election, we have Bernie winning the landslide. Oh, I do absolutely think so because I feel like again, a lot of Democrats did not show up in the election because of Hillary. Before. Two reasons. One, they thought. There's no way that Donald Trump would ever get elected, so a lot of Democrats didn't go. And two, a lot of Democrats despise Hillary Clinton mm -hmm. for the things that she's done, yeah. and so they wanted absolutely nothing to do with it. Again, though, still thinking there was no way that Donald Trump. I was one of those Democrats. So they all voted. All I still think the main reason that a lot of those people didn't show up were because they th did not think there was any chance in hell that yeah. Donald Trump would ever be president. I only didn't think Donald Trump thought he was going to be president. I think mean, there was my thing. There was Russian collusion. I feel like he had a really good idea that he was going to be president, dude. From from what I've the little the reading that I've seen, there a lot, of, a lot of the social media like that was going on, like and all of the negative stuff about Donald Trump was like I've seen a lot of people like pinpointing that to Russian sources as like proliferating all the Donald Trump memes. It's just publicity. Yeah, he's in your head. He's in your head, and he's sure to resonate with somebody. Yeah. you know what I mean. Like we may think he's an idiot. But the next guy is, hears it. It's oh my god! This is the new word of law. You know what I mean? It's like they say, "Love me or hate me." At least you're talking about me. So but, I, that's like, but who is that smart? Like who? Like a lot. Of, I mean, I don't think it's necessarily any one individual. I don't think that Vladimir Putin decided to come yeah. up with this plan and was like, oh, well, "Yeah, I he was like, let's get on a coalition of people." I think there's about Reddit. Well, I do. I think Reddit. that was a collection of people who were like, "What's the what's a way that we can." influence and make an effect on American politics. Well, selection going on. How can we do that? What's the easiest way? Well, I mean, we've Egypt, dude, think about what happened with Egypt just because of Twitter. Like there yeah. wasn't, there's was a revolution there. Like oh, they overthrew yeah, yeah, yeah. government as a result of social media. Straight up. So like, like that, that right there is proof as to what can happen as a result. Not of social even media. So if you get on social media and you just pass around Especially when you look and realize that people don't read freaking articles today. Mm -hmm. They look at a headline and they headline, go, holy yeah. shit, holy shit. And then they don't read that the headline is complete bullshit. And like the article is almost not contradictory to what he, it's stated. Here's another thing to literally uh, piggyback to piggyback David's social media argument. Fake Think about the, uh, the free Coney. Oh uh, yeah, that shit was a major ripoff. It right? was even huge. That, even when it was happening, huge. I we had government funding because of it. I thought it was absolutely retarded. Crazy. Um, think about think about uh, Syria. Syria was huge yeah. on social media, and so what did it get? It got huge media broadcasting all around. 
It was a huge topic of debate. It was now the president is in the spotlight. What decision is he going to make? Now we have. I, can we? Just, was, can, can I interrupt you for a second? Yeah, just, absolutely. Can we, can we roll back to the disaster that was Coney twenty twelve? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That was, I'd love to. That was the most ridiculous thing I've ever witnessed in my life. My I'm problem just, is, <laughs> uh, okay, can, can I give you my opinion? Yeah, go right ahead. Please um, do. Give it to me. So Coney twenty twelve to me is really like almost like, and it's going to sound weird. Vietnam. This is why okay. it is a war we cannot win, okay. and here's why. There have been fighting tribes in Africa going on for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. It will always it would always happen. The problem I have with it is that we are so afraid to take in refugees from this area to get out of the country and actually stop the influx of children soldiers that Coney has available to him. But yet we want to bomb the area, blow it up. To try and find this man. We're having another Iraq war. We're in search of Saddam Hussein, who is a figurehead, and Kony is probably in a hole right now, hiding out because we do have troops after him. We do have money going into that. Um, even though it's blown by and it was honestly a meme of the time, um, we're still spending hundreds of thousands of dollars every single day to try and find a man that probably we won't find. I I now have the perfect verses for this. Child soldiers, yes or no? And I will play devil's advocate all day on this one. I got a I got a good devil's advocate. Are you yes? He's no. Oh for, yeah, yes, I guess. Not necessarily for like like that child soldiers is a good thing, but more so the stance that it's not our place to tell their culture what is and is not correct because morality is shades of gray okay. and us. Yeah, so I could totally debate that on the yes side in that it's not, I, don't, I can't tell them that that's wrong, mm-hmm. even though I think it is. Here's where I will, because I'm going to combat you just for the sake of let's have a nice little argument because yeah, no. I like it. But I'm going to, before I start, I'm going to piggyback you because, like you said, in the morality aspect, I feel like in America, we base our morality about around Christianity. A lot of people do. And religion. I don't. <laughs> and I feel like African culture is basing it around their religion and their beliefs. And so in oh, their in their eyes, a lot of children uh, by the age of 12, sense. a lot of children are having children by 14, 15. Mm-hmm. It's, there's still tribes living in huts in Africa. Um, that's not me being racist or me being uh insensitive about their culture no 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 i'm just i'm just being clear but it's 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 fact in australia it's the same thing we don't have that in america and american people don't understand the way that they think about things so a a 12 year old boy in in africa is considered a man is considered a man we're we're talking about like like six, seven, eight year old children as well. So it's not like it's just twelve year olds. I am so not we're, we're for it about in any sense of the matter. Like we're talking about like most absolutely even in their culture, children. It's just that they don't not I wouldn't say they, but I would say the, the perpetrators of They don't it, care. Of the people using child soldiers just don't care. They don't give one shit either way, whether it's they're a, twelve it's a warm three, body. If they can hold a gun and, and walk shoot. and pull the trigger, they're perfect for the army. No, most That's definitely. all you need. It's wrong? Yeah, probably. I would definitely say, like, in most people's said, like, world agree. sense, it's not a good thing. It's definitely wrong. I would say I think it's pretty despicable and mm-hmm. kind of disgusting. But I also think that, like, it's stupid of us to go, like you were saying, spend our resources to, like, stop it. Like, it is. Yeah. Like, it's, first off, what we deem as wrong does not necessarily, and I'm sure there's, I, I know I'm not saying that the people in Africa think the child's you know, soldiers is a good thing. I don't mm-hmm. know. Maybe, I have no idea. Maybe it's an honor. I have no. I, <laughs> like, I'm, like, I, We're knows? not Japan. This like, is not the samurai. Like, genuinely, who knows? What if like who knows what they? But yes, like, I totally like, understand what you're saying. I have no idea. I assume they probably don't like their children being kidnapped and forced to die. But it's just like what? What? Uh, who are we to step into an entire culture and like play policeman? Like it's not. That's it's, like like America's we, job. Do you know do, like? Nobody stepped in and made America like what it is. Like the American, I'm not saying we like we did this, but like, but the, like American the American people, people rose together. They rose together and made it what it was. It wasn't Great Britain like that. They made themselves what they were. It's not like somebody intervened and said, "Well, now you're a world power." Mm-hmm. Like you just have 
the country, the people of that, they have to come together and decide we want to be better than this. Yeah. You know, and that's how it happens. We can't step in and say, no, 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 here's band-aids. Yeah. Cause then it's like the band-aids just come off. We can help them with solu- like permanent solutions. Here's education. You know, here's birth <laughs> control. Here is medication, food. Other than that, I don't think we need to touch it. It's their problems to fix. And that may sound cold, but it's like you can't. It's just not our job. It's exactly. <laughs> well, it's, 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 it's like. I don't think it's like well, cold if it's not our job. It's, 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 it's well, I mean, you can say that it's I mean, cold in that well, we're essentially saying you don't. I guess we can care. obviously help. Yeah. But that's why I'm saying education, food, exactly. medication, birth control, like contraception. That's how we can help. Well, and like that's why I am uh, policing and militarizing. Like, I definitely have like a a mad respect for Greece because listen, 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 listen. Um, let me help you. Yeah, let me help you with this. Uh, and the exact that you're talking about, their own people are revolting. Um, I understand they are in a they are in a bankruptcy as a country. They don't have economic stability, but the people themselves are seeing that they do not like what's going on. They did that, and they want to change it. They did that to themselves. The Grecians themselves voted into. They did. They did. But now they are seeing they want. They need to change it. We are in that situation in America. We voted Donald Trump as our president. Their path to bankruptcy exact happened exactly like Donald Trump happened in the United States. They didn't give a shit. And they voted it the way. And now they're figuring out they need to change it. When it went the way that they voted it to go, they are pissed that it went the way that they. It sounds like America, doesn't it? Like, but yet they're revolting and making sure that they get a change. It's my birthday. You have a surprise party for me, and you make me a cake, and I come in and sit down, and I just flip the cake off the table, and then I walk over and start yelling at you, screaming like, "What the fuck? Like this was my cake. Like I wanted it, but I'm the one who shit on it." Hey, I understand what you're saying. (laughs) I understand what you're saying. But what I'm saying is that this is exactly what happened with America. Like you said, I have respect for the Grecians and the people of Greece and the fact that they realize that, damn, we really fucked up. We need to fucking fix this situation. And so now they're doing something to fix the situation and try and get back on track to get their economy in a stable position. They... I just don't think from from the reading I've done and the like the people that they voted out of office with the plans that were mentioned to they literally voted people who would directly decrease the value of their dollar and they stated that and they didn't care. So like what I'm saying is they had people saying here are good solutions and they said no, get out of the office and they voted in the bad solutions and now okay. they're revolting and rioting when their bad solution was bad. Mm-hmm. So out. it's like Time children out. throwing a fit. No, 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 no. Yes, it is. I have also read into this, Dave. Dude, the, what you are saying is the exact- economy is in the shithole because of their poor choices and nothing else. Dave. Dave. Hey, let me help Just you. Just like all countries in the shit is going to the shithole because of hey, our poor choices. Hey, let me help you with this. <laughs> Um, the Grecian people definitely did vote in a bad group of people. Chug that. Um, but with the revolt, what they were trying to do, and what you're saying is they're signing in people who are decreasing the, decreasing the value of the Grecian dollar. Yes, that is fact. Um, but what it can be um, comparable to is what Obama did in 2008. No. As far as, yes, the surplus of money getting flown into the economy – they are printing more money. Yes, it will increase inflation and decrease the value of the dollar. But what they're doing is trying to get more money spent in Greece to make that sure that the economy is more stable more and money. more people are making Dude, money. That is like the most backward ass economics I've ever heard. By just no. printing more money, you do not promote economic growth. You hinder it by you know, increasing inflation. You are you are pushing inflation into the entire society to make it to where people are making no, more money. You're inflating the cost of goods because if everybody has a hundred dollars. Nobody has a hundred dollars. It works better with a larger de- denomination than a hundred dollars. But Dave, by just printing more money, you don't solve the, any. Sort the of cost situation. of goods are going up by fifteen cents no, on you're, average. But you're, you can the, look at the value of your dollar de- drops after it, World War Two. I mean, most definitely, you can look at Germany after World War Two. And what happened is Germany's economy failed because they did not have any money Dude, going into the economy. There's a reason they were in so much debt that they could not even afford. To buy goods. So, therefore, them not buying goods made them 
poor in themselves, unable to eat, and unable to grow an economy because they didn't have the ability to support a business growing in this economy. You have to have money flowing in order to make money. Absolutely. I mean, that's but completely just different than what you Printing said. more No, that's money. not different than what I said. Mm, that doesn't sound like what I'm saying by printing right, money, we are putting more money into the economy. Um, definitely increases the price of goods. You I'm do, not disagreeing with that. something like what FDR did. You install public works, and now people have jobs. And and I guarantee you, in the next in the next year to two years, there will be plenty of public works object well, oh, projects going on. I don't understand really where your argument came from because you were saying it's good that they were revolting, and then you like changed what you were saying to like defend the people who put their economy in the shithole. But I'm saying the same people who put it, put their economy in the shithole are revolting right now because they're in the same situation as people who didn't vote for Hillary are. How drunk are you on a scale of one to ten? Yeah, dude. I don't on a scale know what of one you're to ten. On a scale of one to ten. I'm probably like a six. Not too bad. Yeah. Um, I, I don't really understand what just. Kind what of I'm saying is that what happened I, earlier in this podcast, <laughs> little, I, if you rewatch it and listen to it, Dave. It's just fun um, around here where you're going. Talking, I just can tell because you're talking with your eyes closed. <laughs> no, it's bad to focus. Uh, earlier in this podcast, I talked about how I was one of those Democrats who did not vote. In the presidential election, I vote. I voted for my state bills um, because I do care about those, and I could make an impact on that. But I felt as though in the state of Oklahoma, me voting for Hillary Clinton did not matter as far as going against That's Donald Trump. I, I didn't vote for Hillary Clinton. I voted for Gary Johnson. Very independent. Will do so for the rest of my life. It's Respect you for it. That I can't vote in the primaries. Respect you for it, but. I didn't vote for it. I voted for my state bills. And so I was saying I was one of those people who was a part of the problem. But now I'm trying to revolt and change what we have in office right now to try and better our country for the All future. Right, revolting is not the solution. Like, you just need to change it. And, like, by, like revolting. But you have to revolt in no, some situations. Listen, you, have to, you, you revolt from a government that's out of the people's control. The the Grecian government was out of the people's control. They, they voted it exactly the way that it was. I don't know what you're talking about. That that's it, how it, that's it how was, communist Russia was, started. It, dude, it was the not, people voted it in. Did they dude, not? It was never Did ever anything but a democracy. Yes, that is exactly how that happened. But that in no way relates to Greece it and what's its totally current state. Relates. They are in no way even close to a totalitarian state, dude. They are a absolutely democratic state. They voted themselves in the city. That's what I'm arguing. That my whole argument is that they voted themselves where they are. Nobody else did it. The Grecian people put themselves in the toilet and then flushed it. And now, as the toilet flushes, they're pissed off that they flushed the toilet. And so they're pissing on the dude trying to clean the toilet. What I'm that's saying exactly. is that the Grecian people I, were bamboozled. They were... No, they were they not! Were, they were not! They were not bamboozled! Dude, go Thank please, you for letting me finish my, my, my you, argument. That first sentence made the rest of the, the statement invalid. Because they were not bamboozled. Please, All right, Joe Budden. Please go do some reading, though. I'm like, I have done. I have done reading. They were not bamboozled. They knew what they were doing. Dave, they did it. Dave, and now they're pissed when the outcome that they clearly, knew was going to happen. Happened. Clearly, we're going to continue right. on to another conversation because you're not going to let me talk on it. Um, so we can continue to move on. <laughs> um, but I'm going to end with that. We can end it on your argument. That's okay. I don't mind. Um, what would you guys like to talk about next? What's been on your mind? Um, what's been going on lately? Hmm. <laughs> What's been on my mind? Not much, man. I think it's pretty weird how we just coexist with animals sometimes, but besides that, I don't really think about much besides rap music. <laughs> I'm excited for another release. Yeah. I'd love to see uh I'd love to see Mad Lib or MF Doom drop something. Yeah. That would be it. Would be a surprising drop, but I would definitely really appreciate it. I was say that's just wishing. I just mm, we we ended the conver- I just we ended the conversation with you. You trying to argue that Greece had a totalitarian government. That's no. what I want to point out right no. now, and we can move forward no. because that is just. It's not what I was trying to do. You compared them to communist Russia, dude. It was a comparison. Doesn't mean that they were the exact same. (laughs) That's where I said they were definitely irrelevant. Bringing irrelevant comments in is why I don't interrupt you. Hey, Dave. They were bamboozled. Dave. Dave. There's a difference between similar and identical. And they were in no way similar, was what I was saying. They were very similar, not identical at all, but similar. Do you understand that in communist Russia, the votes, they didn't have them, right? 
And in Greece, they it was it's a direct democracy in that they directly voted all of the people who run their government into office. And in communist Russia, that didn't happen. Do you not realize that media controls a lot of what people see in the world? And so as if the media has control of what is going out, the propaganda behind it can, can control what the people vote for. And they might not be actually informed in what they are voting and for. And that makes it less which is, people's which, fault. Which is comparable to what is going on in the United States of America. Dalton. And that's why I have respect for the Grecian that's people. in the buck. By blaming the media and not your own desire to find information, you are passing the blame. By you, no, no, I'm not saying I, I, you. I'm I, just saying anyone who says they, it's the media's fault. I'm just fault, explaining. They don't know I'm explaining on. what happened. That's 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 excusing stupidity. <laughs> that's what that is. You don't excuse I'm not, stupidity. I'm not excusing it. I'm saying that I am proud that people are realizing that they fucked up and they're trying to fix what they fucked up. Well, if you were trying to tell me that you've never fucked up in life, yeah, and that if you fucked up, you, you then know, you didn't you try know, and fix it. You know what I do? That is what you're trying you know to tell what me. I do when I fuck up in life. I don't go shit on the things I'm trying to fix, like they are. We're talking about a riot, dude. We're talking about a rioting people. We're not talking about people calmly saying this needs to change. We're talking about people shitting all over their hey, own country. We live with things need to hey, be different. We live in the United States of America, and people riot. No, it okay. happens. Dalton. It happens. Dalton. I'm not condoning their. If, if I'm walking down the street hey, Dave, saying Tulsa needs problem. to be better, and I throw a window through a pharmacy window, well, am I really well, a proponent well. of the correct? Like, you know what I'm saying? Let's take it. If, but, if hey, I throw a window and yell Tulsa needs to be a safer place, am I? Am I a, a good? That's not what they're arguing. And Dave, the problem <laughs> is, is that you're trying to speak over me right now, and I'm trying to talk, and you're not giving me my time to explain myself, and it really has bothered me. It's I wish that you would. Um, so we could have a, a good debate that didn't need to be, I'm going to speak louder than you. Um, what I'm saying is that I'm proud of the fact that, yes, they fucked up. We you, fuck up as human. Will you let me talk? Or are you you're, gonna like, you're, you're saying all feelings, though. Like I'm telling you like facts about things, and you're saying, I like these things. I like, like the That's fact, not an argument. I like that's the fact you that I just opinions, talked about. And I'm telling you. No, but Dave, 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 I'm interrupting Dave, to tell you that you're not contributing to the Dave, conversation. Hey, what you're I, saying, I really appreciate Dave, their Joe, result. Let's just let him hey, make Joe, his point. I appreciate their result. Hey, Joe, you're not saying, well, they actually did. Let's just let yeah, him make his point. Let's just let him make his point. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Let's just let him finish. about their results. Okay. I want facts. How are dispute what I'm let's saying? Just let, let's just let's just like let's this. just hear him out. All right. Let's, let's just let's hey, just hear what he has to say. Dave, if you want to rewind this clip 16 minutes when my original statement was original, but we're not at your original statement anymore. That's hey that's Dave. Weird. You can't just Dave. I'm I'm getting on the point where okay. you are Bill O'Reilly and the fact that okay. you are interrupting me okay. every time I talk. Okay. Can you spend so say seconds? something on topic? Can you stop? Say something on topic. Say something on topic as opposed to talking to me. We're on topic. I'm talking about the Grecian people. Yes. Um, you so can't spend 30 seconds without facts, talking. As opposed to what you you like about it. That's um, what I'm trying to say. We're on an opinion-based podcast where I'm giving my opinion on the but subject. I'm using facts. You can't refute You're not facts using facts. What? I'm, where's your sources? Will okay, you cite okay, them? Okay, I'm not going to sit here and pull up articles. Because you read. can't. No. Um, go ahead and be quiet and let podcast. me talk. Or you can continue <laughs> talking and we can have a shit podcast. That's your choice. Um... <laughs> You are being ridiculous right now. Okay. I just don't understand why you can't stop talking for 30 seconds. You've been talking for the last four minutes. <laughs> yep. All right, guys. So we're back. Uh, I got a little heated and did exactly what I was making fun of earlier. So uh, <laughs> that's cool. Um, so I guess to recap, we talked about Greece. Um, I don't know. What, what else did we cover today, guys? We did the one thing we've always talked about we didn't want to do, and it was talk about politics yeah. on the podcast. And mm-hmm. this is why. why. Yeah. This is why. why. It gets too heated. Um, we, we did have a discussion um, out in the garage, um, over a stove. Um, we talked about we, we do want to have a debate. We want to be prepared. And that way we can politics. give you guys some actual facts and information where we can cite some sources and make sure that our arguments are actually cite some on sources. point. Um, but that'll be in the future. Um, obviously, we talked about it earlier. Um, next week, guys, look forward to Cooley B's going to be on the show. Um, excited about that interview. Um, but yeah, just we uh, we're buddies. We uh, love each other. <laughs> we're brothers. We promise. And we love you guys. Yeah. Thank you for watching us. Yeah, we appreciate you it. You all rule. 
So Peace. I think I think we're gonna dip out. Ha- have a have a good one. And uh, again, thank you for watching. At the table. Like yeah. comment. Subscribe, At the table. Do all that stuff. Please. Do it down at the bottom, Social please. Media. Thank you. Please follow us so you can get all the notifications, and we'll bug you all the time. Donate to my GoFundMe. <laughs> at we need money for twenty sixty nine ninety seven sixty nine. Mixtape Warner. Please help. D Burgess. Thank you. Four Pop bills. salt. Bye. Peace. Peace. Bye.